and welcome to the inside of the new Porsche 911 in its 992 generation, replaces the 991. It is the eighth model in all 911 generation lines and things are different. I've literally just got in it, so you are learning as I do. I've had to pull this stubby little gear lever into drive. If I want control myself, I get paddles for an eight-speed PDK transmission, which is new, replaces a seven-speed. There will be a manual later. This is a wide-bodied 911 because they are now all wide-bodied 911s. There have been tweaks to the three-litre turbocharged, twin-turbocharged, flat-six engine. Turbochargers are now slightly bigger. They are symmetrical. Intercoolers have moved right behind the engine so they're more efficient first impressions well it still feels like a 911 they've done some work in the cabin to make it feel a bit more like the classic 911 which had a very broad dashboard in its first couple of generations there's much more digital display tech than there used to be so now I get an analog central rev counter and then all of the dials around it are digital and configurable big digital display in the middle but with still a few buttons down here for the nice actual sort of haptic feedback in addition to your touchscreen stuff so things like my temperature gauge thankfully are still on a nice sensible button that is where I left it. Drive position is still good, steering wheel still comes out a long way, steering wheel is round excellently. Apparently there is 12mm more headroom because this is a new generation seat in a body that's round about the same size as before the wheelbase is the same always quite a short wheelbase because of where the engine is for design purposes the overall length is up by 20 millimeters but there's no particular engineering reason for it Porsche just likes the fact that it looks a bit more aggressive in this gen given all body styles are now wide there is a risk they all look a little bit like a 911 turbo isn't it so I wonder what the turbo will look like when it arrives So this is a 4S with a sports chassis, which means it gets a 10 millimeter chassis drop. It also has active rear steer. So it gets the full gamut of optional chassis stuff that you can spec at the moment. Still revs at seven and a half, just like the three litre from the just departing 991. And it still sounds like a flat six. I mean, it doesn't sound as zingy as a GT3 engine, obviously, but it's quite a nice sound. PDK works really quickly. I mean, twin clutch gearboxes always work really fast because it's as simple as disengaging one clutch and engaging another. Brake feel is really nice. Steering feel is, is good. It's a nice weight. You can feel the weight build up mid-corner. Everything's electrically assisted these days, but E-Pass systems are getting better and better and better. This one feels like a really nice one. Body control is good. You can feel a little bit of movement because this is after all a road car not a track car i will be intrigued to try a 2s and to see what the chassis balance is like this one feels nice and neutral for consistency's sake i had a go in a 991 last week it's been a long time since i tried one so i took a 911t out on the road and it really felt in that 911 way where the front end was really light and the back end is settled and automotive engineers talk about this they say you know weirdly uh, a 911 doesn't work like it like it ought to work you know the frequencies of damping at the front and the back are different because of the huge weight differences front to rear in a typical 911 you quite often find yourself guiding the front a little bit and then of course there's obviously loads and loads and loads of traction but with the extra front track width this one feels a bit less rear engine if you like it feels that bit more consistent front and rear. This one's got active rear steer as well. There's now active engine mounts, which are more rigid than previously, so apparently they work rather better. It feels staggeringly capable. I mean, really capable, but also not really any less exciting than it was. I mean, there have been times in the past where we've gone to a new generation of a 911 and come away going, Oh, well, you know, it's it's better in every absolute respect, but when they went from air cooling to water cooling, they introduced power steering, then they introduced electric power steering, and, there, and then eventually turbos. So there have been quite a lot of things over the years that progress has dictated where 
the 911 has matured a bit and become perhaps a bit less exciting in the process. This is one of those generations where I think none of that applies. It's just as exciting as it was, but it is also more sophisticated than it was too. But anyway, I will talk you through some more of the tech detail and then head out on the road as well for a sample of what is ultimately, I mean always a sensational track car, but what is ultimately got to be a fun road going sports car. So the 992 has a much greater proportion of aluminium in its body shell, some 60% which is up from around 30%. The front track is up by 46mm on both cars and the rear track is up by 39mm on two wheel drive cars because they now have the wide body too. Wheel sizes are uneven front and rear for the first time on a regular 911. There are 20 inch wheels on the front, 21 inch wheels on the back with 245 section tyres on the front and a whopping width of 305 on the rear, which is one of the reasons that the latest 911 is so massively capable. And so welcome back into the inside of a Carrera 2S. Now, unseen by you, I have had a quick go on the road in a 4S. So that's the four-wheel drive, 444 brake horsepower, 450 metric horsepower coupe. The S models, these 450 ones, are the only ones available at launch. There will be a lower-powered one plus a manual later before we get into the inevitable GT3 RSs so on and so forth but I had a go in the 4S and I wanted to wait and do this talky bit on the 2S for the reason that I really enjoyed the 4S on the road but I just wondered if there might be a little bit of steering corruption where the four-wheel drive powertrain that puts at least five percent to the front but can put more and also will put more in the wet mode particularly it just as it does in an Audi R8 say or most rear-wheel drive cars that have a bit of four-wheel drive to the front where it just corrupts ever so slightly the steering which in something like a 911 is so core to its appeal so I'm on a really nice stretch of road in this 2S it does steer that bit more faithfully that bit more true it's a really nice rack for an electric system particularly. The weighting is good, the off-centre feel is good, it's got sort of right linearity and consistency. The weight builds up in, you know, the modern approximation of road feel. It's really lovely, it's really lovely. Am I having more fun than I would in, say, there's a first generation 911 back at back at the base Porsche are using for this and it's on 165 section tyres with 15 inch wheels and it's so beautiful and compact to look at and you'd think driving it along a road like this with its much lower limits and its manual gearbox and everything you think what a real pleasure of feeling the weight move around as it as it surely would what a real pleasure it would be and there's something to be said for simplicity and lightness and immediacy of response that a car like a 911 today is always going to have difficulty matching because this is laden with tech it is a big car a bigger car than ever especially now that even in 2s form i've got the wider front end and actually i do think that's a shame i i do miss having a slightly narrower 911 so in summary to break it down into its constituent parts then steering accurate responsive feels some nice like it Chassis, good composed, good ride, good body control, feels like a sporting GT car exactly where it should be. Interior, maybe there's a bit too much going on in the touchscreen that you could have proper buttons for, but generally it's a good well-built solid cabin. Otherwise they've taken all of the bits of the 991 and just made it, just made it better. It just feels like a better 911. I strongly suspect, and we'll do a full group test at some point, but this car slipped, I think, straight into a position at the top of its class. I can't imagine testing it alongside any of the other rivals and preferring them. It's just such a crushingly capable piece of kit. And that's it. I'll end there.